Well, Matt, it was always nice to start in the first group game with a win, and your second half performance was excellent, and I think that's the reason you won the game. You outscored your opponents 2-8 to 2-1. Yeah, for sure. I didn't realise it was that much in the second half. But look, every team uh, wants to win their first one to get a bit of momentum up and get two points on the board. Um, obviously, we finished fifth in the hurling, which allowed us an extra couple of weeks to prepare for football, which stood, stood us well today. Um, but look, it's a new St. James's team. There's five or six guys making their senior championship debut tonight. Aidan Shannon scored 1-2 or 1-3. Darren Phillips played as well. Colin, Colin uh, Fitzgerald is there too. Um, so it's... a uh, we're changing all the time, and Graham there is doing excellent work. Brian Kennedy and Mick, Mick Welch as well. So, uh, but that's only one game down. We've got four games to go, and uh, it's a tough group. Um, got the you know reigning champions next week, and uh, you know we saw also what they did in Leinster. They're well capable. They've got Owen O'Gar there, you know, an All Ireland winning player to add to their ranks as well. So we're under no illusions. Um, it's one step of five to get to a knockout stage. We haven't got to the quarter final in the last number of years, so that's our, our number one goal. You kind of took the game, I know I said that originally, but by the scuff of the neck, didn't you? You scored four points and you kind of bossed the game really, didn't you? And, and Bucky came off the bench and you know, he did the job for you because he just won ball and he just passed it around. He didn't do anything silly. He kept possession and used it really well. Yeah, look, Glen Barrington are a quality outfit and we were a little bit, dis little bit disappointed going in two points down. We felt we played well in the first half but missed a few chances. But we knew if we stuck at it, kept doing the right things, getting the ball to the right people in the scoring positions that we could do damage on the scoreboard and we did. And then I think when the game came down into the melting pot, we were a little bit smarter, a little bit more composed and look, it's great to be able to call on Bucky. Um, I'm not sure how many years he's playing with St. James now. I said he was 47 <laughs> <laughs> That's a bit unkind to him, but he won't thank you for that. But <laughs> no, look, no. he's an absolute stalwart, yeah. and he does exactly um, what he, he he fulfills his role to an absolute tee every day. Very smart in possession, never gives the ball away, and it's great to be able to call in his experience. And you know we're going to need that moving forward. So it's very much a panel effort. Um, but as I said, it's one step of uh, five rounds to go on the group stage before we move on. But in reality, though, match it was nice to get off to a win. It kind of does take a little bit of pressure off, doesn't it? Well, look, we're under no illusions. We ended up in a relegation final last year against our neighbours, Horswood. We, you know, that's our ambition this year is to qualify for the knockout stage. We don't want to be there again. We feel like we've got enough quality to, to get into the knockout stages. And once you get to there, you never know what happens. But as I said, very early days. We're still, we haven't seen the rest of the teams play yet. You know, everyone's going in for this. So um, we've got another few games to get ourselves right. But as I said, nice to get two points on the board. There's a huge debate about fixtures at the moment. There always is, as long as I've been involved in J. And this there's always a huge debate about it. But all of the players I've spoken to like the format in Wexford. What do you make of it? Yeah, look, if you ask any player, um, it's all about games, uh, training to games ratio. And you know the fact that you have a game every week means that you're not getting flogged midweek. It's a long enough season as it is. And you know we play the game to play games. We don't play the game to train all the time. So. Um, Look, it's obviously going to be a testing on the panel when you're playing week in, week out, but I think it makes it more competitive and it tests teams uh, to, you know, test teams more. Uh, I'm very much in favour of it. Um, the majority of players I speak to are as, as well, but you know, every, everyone, the grass is always greener. There's no perfect uh, solution here, but I think we've got it right. Um, so I'm happy with the way it is. And in terms of, you know, the playing off the hurling first and then playing the football. Is that better for both codes, do you think, for the for the skill level of both codes? One hundred percent. I think ninety five percent of the teams in Wexford are dual are dual clubs. So for ourselves, you know, we're predominantly football first. So for us to get, you know, a clear run at hurling allows our guys to develop more and up their skill levels there. Whereas if you're going football hurling, football hurling, it's very difficult for our guys to do that. And similarly, you know, you've got quality hurling teams there that um when you're they're focusing on hurling as their number one sport in the club and it's, they never get to re reach the heights that they can in football. And you see that with the Starlights in the last number of years um as well. So, um, yeah, I think I prefer that to the hurling football uh, every second week. I prefer hurling to a finish or football to a finish, whatever the way may be. Yeah, and, you know, Crow Park have done their job, they will argue. You know, they brought forward the All-Irelands, but some counties haven't played ball. We certainly played ball in Wexford, Matthew. Yeah, look, the split season was voted on by players. It was brought in by Central Council. It's there by merit. And I think any change is going to be met with resistance because people always want to, you know, what, what was always there. And historically, that's the way they always see it. But I think if you ask players, this is what we're crying out for. For me, as an inter-county player, I'm guaranteed probably a six-week off-season, which I probably haven't had in the last decade of playing with Wexford. And it's the same with every other inter-county player across the nation as well. So... And then for a club player, you know that the first half of the year you've got your chance to get away and you know exactly when you're going to be playing your championship so you can plan, plan accordingly rather than training for no games in the first half of the year. So I definitely think it's the way forward and um, I suppose it, gives, it gives people a bit more balance to their life, I think. And in returning to this evening's game, 
you now know, have a better idea where you're at, haven't you, after the, after the first game? Because you can train and you can play practice matches, but when you really have to do it, you have a fair idea where you're at now, haven't you? Uh, yeah, look, it's the first day out. Um, great to get a win. It'll be a good bounce in the camp going into the training this week. But, uh, you know, in seven days' time, we could be in a different boat. So you've got to just take it one game at a time. Uh, at a time, And we're delighted to be walking away with a win. Two points on the board. And, um, yeah, we'll see where we, where we lie uh, after five rounds. Absolutely. Thanks for coming up, Matthew. Thanks, Liam. Best looking next year.